Hollywood in the 90s was about power, and that's where Anthony Pelicano enters the picture. This guy's getting hired by rich people, powerful people to solve high-level problems. Michael Jackson, Burt Fields, Howard Weitzman. You're not going to get no blow to the career. It ain't going to happen. Just stick with me, baby. I'll take care of it. If you were famous and had a problem in the 90s, Anthony Pelicano was the man you hired to make it go away. He is the focus of a new two-part documentary from the New York Times Presents. Pelicano was born here in Chicago, and he was also said to be the inspiration for Showtime's Ray Donovan series. Rachel Abrams and Liz Day are producers and reporters for New York Times Presents and put together this documentary, and they join us live now. Good morning. Good morning. I, I think so many of us have heard about Anthony Pelicano from the Michael Jackson case, but how did he get started in this business of, of kind of spying on people? Was, did he have a law enforcement background? Was he a private investigator prior to that? So Pelicano told us that he started wiretapping, I believe, back in the 60s. Okay. And he said he learned forensics from being a forensic audio analyst in the military. And he starts to become a private investigator and is so good, he makes his way to Hollywood in which he starts working on the biggest cases in the country. Give us an idea for those who don't know some of the cases he worked on and what he actually did. Sure. Well, some of his biggest clients are household names like Michael Jackson, for instance. Um, he was often brought in when folks had a high level dispute um, to give their lawyers some kind of an edge. And what everybody claimed not to know was that that edge often included uh, information that was gleaned from illegal wiretapping. But, you know, he was linked to some of the biggest cases in the 90s. He was linked to the O.J. Simpson trial. He was linked to Michael Jackson, as I mentioned. Um, he had even done some opposition research for Arnold Schwarzenegger when Arnold Schwarzenegger was running for governor. Um, and so he, uh, yeah, viewers are probably familiar with some of the celebrities that he um, has been linked to over the years. And his work had some serious repercussions, especially in terms of Michael Jackson, with the allegations that he had molested children. Well, one, Wade Robson came out and said no, I, but it, after he'd had a conversation with Anthony Pelicano, can you uh, expand on that? Sure. So viewers might remember that when the first child abuse allegations emerged in 1993, Anthony Pelicano was there front and center, and he gave a press conference saying these are extortion, uh, these claims are from extortion, and it's just a money grab and it's all fake. He also trotted out character witnesses for Michael, including a little boy named Wade Robson, who said, I sleep in bed with Michael, but nothing ever happens. Many years later, it emerged in a, a deposition of which video we obtained and show in the documentary that Wade's mother said, you know, we felt coerced to do that interview by Anthony Pelicano. Mm. So talk about where he, he ended up going to jail. How did that happen? What was his downfall? And I know he's out now and talking. Yeah, he was actually went to jail the first time on weapons charges. Uh, there were he was he had a bunch of explosives that he claimed he was for holding for a client and forgot about. And while he was in jail on weapons charges, uh, the federal agents found a, a evidence of illegal wiretapping and a bunch of other crimes. And he ends up going to prison for more than 15 years. He got out in um, 2019, and since then has been linked to other you know big Hollywood people and and disputes. For example. It was reported that he's helping the producer, Joel Silver, with a business dispute. Um, and he has told us that he's working as a fixer once again. And even though he may not be a licensed private investigator, he lost his PI license when he went to jail, he's still solving people's problems at a very high level. So does he see his work as something that has been beneficial or does he is there any remorse there in terms of some of the things that have occurred throughout his career? No. So we sat down with Pelicano and we interviewed him and asked him a lot of really tough questions. And he was steadfast yeah. that he has no remorse for anything he did. And he doesn't believe he ever went after innocent people. And he doesn't believe people were harmed by his work. Well, it's interesting. It's called Sin Eater, The Crimes of Anthony Pelicano. It's streaming now on Hulu. You can check out Rachel and Liz on Twitter. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.